Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to package up our network here into a, a digital asset so we can save it, reuse it, share it with other Houdini users, but also it opens up um, the Houdini engine in um, Unreal Engine. So we can use that as a pipeline tool to actually use um, the workflow of Houdini inside um, Unreal, which is really cool and really exciting. So let's get started. Um, what we're going to do is just going to tidy up our network a little bit and then sort of package it up, add some parameters. If you've worked with digital assets before, you'll uh, recognize the process of adding user uh, parameters to things to really create functionality to make these things super reusable and sort of very user friendly. So let's get started. So I'm just going to do a little bit of tidying just to keep myself honest. So we will bring this section out here. I'm going to put a network box around this because this is the this is the the way that we're going to generate our clusters. So I'm going to put that in a network box just so I can identify it quickly. Double click and add a label called clustering. Okay. It's going to hold Alt and click on that line to drop in a, a network point. Maybe bring these in a little bit. Really start to just tidy, tidy things up. Cool. So with that, I'm just going to drop a null at the end just so I can sort of see where the output is. We've still got a bit of work left to do, um, but we're, we're starting to move to the point where this is ready to bring into engine so we can start to build the materials for it in Unreal. Obviously, we need to work on the shading of the stems. Um, that is not quite right at the moment, but we're going to do something. We're going to drive the shading of these um, using vertex color um, in, a, in a material in Unreal. Okay, so with all that, we can select everything, place it into a subnetwork, okay? And this subnet we will call IV generator. And this is ready to be converted to a digital asset. So we'll right click, create digital asset, and it'll bring up this window asking you where you want to save it. Now, if you choose to save it to the default Houdini 18.5 library, you'll have this asset available to you whenever you open Houdini. Um, so you could work that way. Some people work that way. What I prefer to do is I like to save my digital assets on a per project level if I know I probably won't need, if I, I know where to find it if I ever need it again. So I'm just going to save that to my current working directory and the shortcut for that is dollar hip. I'm going to create a new folder called HDA for Houdini Digital Assets. And I'm going to save it as Ivy Generator. I'm just going to tidy up these names a little bit. So Ivy Generator, hit accept. And here we go, we've got the base parameters now for our Houdini Digital Asset. So the main window that we're interested in is the parameters tab. This is where we can build a user interface for our digital asset. So any parameters we want the user to be able to manipulate, we can put in this list and promote it to the digital asset level. So I guess the first thing we want to promote is our random seed value. So let me just find where our master control for that seed is. And it's on our attributes here where we establish all of our parameters. And what I've done on mine is I've just added another um, float parameter called channel seed here. And I've just added that into the mix so I can promote this parameter here. So when I change this value, I get a different seed value. Okay. And I've done that for the random generation and I'll also do it for the random noise as well. So in this random expression, rather than multiplying by 
42, which is just a you know a random number, what we can do is we can replace it with that channel reference seed. And then we're just gonna again just because I'm paranoid and I want to make sure all these random numbers are different to each other, I'm just going to add another random number to it. Cool. So now that's hooked up the random seed generation. And if you remember the way we've been working with linking all these parameters together, now when we change this seed value, we get a totally different look for every single one. Okay. So what we can do with that seed value, with our operator type windows for our digital assets still open, we can just click on the name and drag it to the root there. And then we can do some fixing of these names so we can just put random seed as the label and then the range we could say maybe I don't know minus 500 to 500 so we've got a thousand different seeds and if we hit apply go up a level you can see that that parameter is now being promoted and we can scroll through and make those connections okay so we might want to link that parameter up to some other areas. So this point jitter here has got a seed value. So we can make this random seed value here drive this seed value of our point jitter. Again, just layering up that randomness. So we can reference it directly using channel referencing. So let's do that. So we're going to use a channel reference. We're going to go up two levels. And then we're going to look for I can't remember what parameter name it was. The parameter name is seed there. Okay, so if I type seed, sorry, we don't need to go up one level. There we go. So go up one level with dot dot forward slash, and then we've got this seed value here. And put that in there. Okay, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Press U to go up a level back to our main parameters. And now when we change the random seed everything is kind of randomly updating with new seed values okay the next thing we'd like to add is the generation method so we've got two methods here are generating we've got the circle and the line so at the moment you can see going into the switch line uh, switch node indicated by the solid line we've got this line going in um, but if we want to switch over to the circle you can just drag this operator to one and then we get a circle okay so we could pr maybe promote this as a parameter but what i'm going to do temporarily i'm just going to build the parameters for the line first of all so on the line node i'm going to drag that length parameter onto our type properties give it a descriptive name and we don't ever want it to be zero, so we could maybe lock that at 10 centimeters, so 0.1. And then 10 meters is probably a bit wide <laughs> for, for a, an asset, so we'll lock that up at five. And we'll also go in there and just make sure that the channel is set to a default value of one. Okay. The next parameter is how many points we want to scatter. Now currently on the resample node, we're set to resample by length. What we could do is just resample that by maximum segments. So we've got an absolute number of how many segments we want. So how many points we can copy onto. And again, we'll drag that segments into the root. And we'll call this number of I think the technical term is frons, which is a strange word, but <laughs> every day is a school day. Uh, so yeah, a frond is an individual like stem, uh, if you like. And we'll lock that at one and maybe 50 is gonna be our upper level for that. And we'll make sure our default is something reasonable like 10. We'll hit apply. We'll just jump up a level by pressing U. And you can see we're starting to build this user interface now for our IV generator. We've got control over the length. We can control how many individual strands of IV we get. And we can also start randomizing it to really start creating some interesting and different looks. Okay. 
So that's the process for building your digital asset. What I would continue to do is do a similar thing for the circle and then a method to, to switch between the different methods. But in the interest of brevity, I think we'll leave that there for this video. Um, in the next video, what we will do is we'll continue to work on the digital asset and we'll look at the pipeline to get things across into Unreal Engine. So with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.